flooding, a darkness falling, the night was coming through. Justice blinded, freedom dying, our fears were coming true. Well, good afternoon, Canada, and welcome to another edition of Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and Friends. I am Art Lucier, and I do have a friend in coming on the program later today. You know, I'm just thinking of that song that I wrote, uh, Forgiven and Free, that you were just listening to. Um, a religious spirit and a spirit of murder came into the nation of Canada 200, 150 years ago. A lot of what we see with all the children being found in unmarked graves around the nation and the destruction of our first peoples, of the, the destituteness of our first peoples, the poverty, the hurt, really can be attributed to a religious spirit that came unchecked into the nation of Canada and through what some would say, um, well-meaning church partnered with a newly formed government here in Canada to build schools and institutions around the nation of Canada, empower the newly formed RCMP to go to almost every nook and cranny of this nation and pull children four and five years up and old and up <clears throat> away from their families and grandparents for 10 months of the year and put them in re-education camps, what we call residential schools today. <clears throat> but 
realizing not everything that was taught or done in those schools were necessarily bad. What did happen was First Nations were shamed of their language, of their culture. Many children, it is a testimony in the eyewitnesses of many First Peoples, that they were killed, that they were thrown out of windows, kicked downstairs, had pins poked in their tongues, And the crime was for them, for the First Nations children speaking their language, which is about the only language, it was the only language they knew. They were forced to learn English very quickly. They were separated from siblings on purpose so that they couldn't talk in their language. They had no one to talk to. And they were forced to assimilate into uh, a European culture. Um, English language. They were ashamed of their names, their the way they dressed, of all of their culture. A religious spirit came in to Canada and destroyed the nations that were already living here, the First Nations. Why am I saying all this? <clears throat> and good afternoon, Canada. Why am I saying all this? One of the major central focuses on the struggle and the fight and the resistance against uh, illegal moves of the government, of a murderous um, genocide that would come through a government um, that would be perpetrated by the church of the day. One of those centers is Saskatchewan and more importantly, Prince Albert. Prince Albert <clears throat> was the center, the central area for the end of a resistance, the end of the Northwest Rebellion, as the government called it at the time, was simply, which was a resistance against a unchecked, powerful group of men who knew was the newly formed government and a religious church that did not value life, um, if I can call it the church. Um, <clears throat> and basically preached hatred and racism from the pulpit of the day. We here at this ministry are going back to that, are being brought back to Prince Albert, and now we're 30 kilometers, 30 miles away from Batoche, where they took Louis Rail. We're going back there and to, to ask the Lord for healing and for revival. Um, as you know, the journey of the Battle for Canada started four years ago, and we did five national gatherings repenting to the Lord for the sins of our fathers, of the government, sins against the Lord of breaking his word and his law. Now, that might be a little bit of a heavy way to start here, this program. But <clears throat> just to let you know, for us to throw off a religious spirit, which to me is the very opposite of the kingdom of God and holds back the Holy Spirit, which we need in Canada today. We have to be aware and we have to actually make a choice to not follow in our father's footsteps, our forefathers of a rel the religious spirit. So as we descend on Prince Albert, I want us to, you to be mindful of where and what you're walking into. Prince Albert, of course, had many people, farmers and RCMP and Métis, who perished in the year 84, 85, in standing for what they believed was right in the nation of Canada. You have to understand all the First Nations were able to travel and hunt throughout this nation unchecked for thousands of years. When I say unchecked, they were free. But a government came in and thought it would better to bring socialism into the nation of Canada to push all of the first peoples onto a very small piece of land, what they were used to roaming and hunting on. And they, the first nations were not allowed off these, what they called them reserves, unless they had a, a letter or a note permission from a white man, an Indian agent at the time. If they were caught off their reserve without a note, you were allowed to um, actually uh, kill the First Nations individual and not even report it. And that is actual fact. 
some fact, some of the facts we, we don't want to hear about. Um, here's another fact that we might not want to hear about. In the Indian Act until 1965, it addressed First Nations as animals. It says Indians and other fur-bearing animals. This is our history. This is our legacy. This is what a religious spirit actually does and what it partners with. And we're coming to Prince Albert to throw off the religious spirit, to throw off our hatred, to embrace one another, to call out for the Holy Ghost, and to believe that God can heal all the travesties of our land and even the state of the nation that we are in today. Um, <clears throat> so, as you know, this program is to give you a perspective of some of the things that we're contending for and fighting for in the nation of Canada to give you a prophetic perspective of why we're doing certain things and to be able to harness your prayers. And we're just so thankful to the Canadian firewall for all of your hours and hours and days as we are in our third year of 24 seven prayer. This is a miracle by the hand of God himself to impart to us the grace and the understanding to be able to bring 2,000, 2,500 intercessors per week to call out for revival and the healing of the land. Well, as some of you know, we are descending on Prince Albert in less than a week. And we want to give you some details about that. And of course, Prince Albert is in the center, the center between Winnipeg, uh, between Manitoba border, Alberta border, kind of this, it's the gateway to the north. It's the center, and the, of course, Saskatchewan's the doorway province. And of course, it's also the province in the land, North Battleford, where a revival hit less than 75 years ago. And we are coming back to the doorway province to see if the door would open again for God to rend the heavens and come down and bring us fire. So, we're going to talk a little bit about this, um, and, and and trust me, um, it's a little bit heavy, our history and our past, but unless we acknowledge it and ask forgiveness, we're never, we never will be forgiven in the nation of Canada, as there's blood in the land that needs to be dealt with. But by the grace of God, the battle for Canada with intercessors in a four-year journey, we went around and did our best to say, God, forgive us for partnering with a religious spirit, for being silent on the issues of life, abortion, our hatred toward, towards immigrants or first peoples. Forgive us for our lack of love. So now, Lord, would you now, as we've turned to you, would you heal our land? Would you, in the spirit of Second Chronicles 7.14, where, which it says, if my people who had who are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, humble themselves. I would hear from heaven. I would heal their land. In the spirit of Second Chronicles 7, 14, we're inviting you to come uh, with the Reformation Revival Alliance and leaders and members of the Canadian Firewall to ask the Lord to come down and heal our nation. Someone who's got boots on the ground right there is an apostle of the land. I like to call him Apostle Kevin Tabucci. He leads the Canadian Revival Center, and by the grace of God, they have acquired a former Catholic monster boarding school, um, which housed First Nations and uh, all Canadians alike for a number of years. It is, and we are coming there. We are going there in less than a week. Let's bring Kevin on right now and talk to him and to his crew there. Hey, Kevin. Welcome to Eagle Eye, my brother. Good afternoon. I, I just want to uh, honor the Lord and honor you uh, for being such an inspiration to our nation and for really having me on this broadcast. I'm just so thankful to be a part of Firewall. And all of, I was on at 6 a.m. this morning. They had a, just a tremendous broadcast. Uh, Mary was on. Hannah was on. Jack Toth was on. And wow. I just really felt to jump in. It's it's been uh, it's been an epic time, uh, Art, over over the last uh, six months here. But um, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to come on the broadcast this afternoon. So, as the battle for Canada, the Canadian Firewall has been praying for revival, 
And here your nation, your ministry is called the Canadian Revival Center. And yeah. here we are going to the center of the province, sort of, well, the center of the doorway province, Saskatchewan, the only province on the map that looks like a door. And remember, the very first province that God called us to, to start the journey of healing was the door province and if you look where north battleford is it looks like the handle on a map and then we came back together at the threshold of the province after the last battle for canada um in moose jaw which is at the threshold of the door and now we move center we come to the center of the province um and here you have the canadian revival center and here we are asking for revival in the center of the province and as we throw off our religiousness and realize that a lot of the travesties and that happened in the nation of Canada and really what sewered Canada and caused a powerlessness and to cause disdain even for, you know, God in the nation, which was a powerless divided church that were not even following the word of God. Here we are in a former Catholic boarding school, which is now the Canadian Revival Center, which is a monster 175,000 square feet. And now we've got the nation coast to coast descending uh, next Thursday there. You can't make this stuff up, Kevin. This is amazing. No, you, you certainly can. And, you know, if I would be backdating things, I've only been here 19 years, but we, my wife and I have had the pleasure of working in the North for 30 years. And the First Nations people are, are so spiritual people. They, they have opened up our eyes so many times to helping us to see the depths of scripture. And I'm so thankful for that working relationship. And, but more recently, um, six months ago, um, God reopened a door uh, through his word in Isaiah 22, 22, where it says the key of David shall be upon his shoulder and I, no man shall close the door. The Lord is open and, and no man shall open a door. The Lord is closed. But eight years ago, that scripture was given to us as a promise from God for this building. And it's not a building. I know it's this week, you know, people were on, on the reset and we were talking about the building, you know, Ephesians 2, where God talks about building buildings. Our focus is not on this building, but I do believe this, the laws of the spirit are parallel. And I believe the law of the spirit here is that just as we are expanding in the spirit in our physical bodies and our spiritual body, with, that is within us, this building represents the expansion rate of the people that are here right now that have laid down their lives. And I have somebody right here right now. His, his name is Kevin. And uh, I'm just going to put on for a second if that's all right. But Kevin sure. joined just a few months ago, but he spoke the fulfillment of Isaiah 22, 22 on this building. And he said, Kevin, do you know that this building is up for sale again? And so I just wanted Kevin to just bring a greeting, and he's he's excited about this conference coming up. Hi there, I'm Kevin. So you got two Kevins to deal with. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. Yeah, hi. So um, I didn't know about the history and the background of Pastor Kevin's involvement with this property um, eight years ago. And so independently um, from the business realm, I was scanning through for properties in Prince Albert, and this property came up and the when I saw it, the Holy Spirit witnessed within me to claim it for the kingdom. But I dismissed it because I was looking at properties from a business perspective. And so a couple of months later, I had to repent on that because the Holy Spirit brought it back up again and said, this is for me and my kingdom. And that's when I was able to make the vital connection between myself, Pastor Kevin, this building, and the purpose of God for not only Prince Albert. Um, and so when I called him, he's funny thing is he's been living in Prince Albert for 19 years. And I'm asking him if he knew about this building and it's up um, for sale. And uh, looking back, I felt kind of stupid asking him that question. <laughs> but um, here we are a couple of months later, we have seen God do what I would call the miraculous. And that is, he has continually brought the price of the real estate down. And in my experience, it's the very first time I have seen the price for a major piece of real estate drop so drastically, like within a couple of months. 
um, to what we got it for. And that can only be the hand of God. Yeah, praise the Lord. So eight years ago. Eight years. Amazing. And um, it was so, yeah. million. It was 15 million. It plummeted. It plummeted. So you got it for under 10% of that. That's correct. And we, we increased our space uh, by uh, just, just over, I think it's closer to 11 times the size of our building. We went from 16,000 to 175,000. That is just, that, that's, uh, that, that, it, it's a miracle. So, like, how's it going there in preparations for the nation descending on you guys? You guys only have been in there for a month. There's so much work to do. Um, I'm, I'm gonna show, oh, go ahead. I'm going to sneak in here. And, uh oh, my wife's here. I just caught up with her. She's got her Timmy's Cup art. Here's my faithful wife, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hey. Oh, wow. We are so excited. Well, yeah. We're excited to come to you once again. And um, this is, it's so ordained of the Lord, the way it all worked out. We know this. And Teresa, you've got an amazing, amazing worship uh, ability and and band there, the 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 Canadian Revival Center worship band, and uh, and we're bringing our band. Okama's coming, uh, M M Melanie and Todd Toes from uh, Do Dolphin, Manitoba. They're bringing their band. Uh, wow. Just very, it's just gonna it's gonna be incredible time of worship. So we were in that room, the yes. sanctuary, uh -huh. um, a week ago, but there's something missing. Show it to me. <laughs> okay, you guys go. You guys go. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a walk. The pews. Take a walk right now. Uh, there's the pews are gone. The, the, uh, the, chairs, the chairs here are stacked up at the back. Uh, we're bringing in over 500 chairs. And by the way, uh, there was a... Uh, there was a, a donation. People are really wanting to to help some people to make it here. We'll talk about that later. But the thing that is going to be missing is is the altar. And I'm, and oh, if I'm you want to sorry, I'm the pews. where's the, the pews? They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. I I believe this with all of my heart. The purpose God brought us into the building is going to be fulfilled on the conference weekend. And it has to do with the altars of God, the altars of God, how we worship, who we worship to, how we worship and who we worship to. This is what's, this is what's being altered. And so this um, marble uh, uh, podium, if you will, and some of the other marble things there, are, are, get, are being removed right now. Um, we have a ramp and we, we've got a, a gentry that we've rented. And and so all of these things are gonna make room. They're gonna make room uh, art so that we can get onto this platform. We can get onto this platform in, in just a few days. We're not just ramping up physically. We're just not ramping up. Over 500 people are ramping up to be here to come across Canada from Labrador to BC, from the far north to the border of the United States, they're coming together to worship Jesus, to worship Jesus. And so there's a, an altering of the altar, the altars where people were having to pass their prayers through Mary and the saints and this one and that one. Now there's direct access through Jesus, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of the universe. So I'm I'm excited that the fulfillment of why we're in this building is going to come to pass for so many of these people. I've got someone here. Hang on. Tim, you want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tim. Tim, I met him in a revival camp, and uh, he's been in some meetings that you were in, Art, but uh, Tim is our maintenance man, and he was in a revival camp in, in Trossachs, uh, in Saskatchewan, he heard about what was happening here, and he said he was praying for two years that he would be able to leave uh, as as a, a worker there and come here to serve in revival. So he is with with us and his son. And uh, Tim, uh, you received a miracle just uh, a couple of weeks ago here at Canadian Revival Center. What happened? Actually, it was just a, a, 
a prayer meeting, a Tuesday night turnaround prayer meeting. And uh, yeah, Kevin's sitting beside me and he says, he said to me, he said, uh, he said something. And I said, what was that? And he, he says, God told me you had a hard time hearing. I said, yeah, I'm only half deaf. And he said, I'm going to pray for you right now. And he prayed for me and my hearing is 100%. 100 percent you, you've lost that hearing for how many years over 20 years 20 years he hasn't had his hearing and it's perfect now it's perfect absolutely, absolutely. you can hear it a whisper oh absolutely yeah and i believe art the whole point is this it's not the physical miracles as we look around this building right now we've got saws here and boards and ramps and things ready to alter the altar the altars of god are about to alter where people will be able to pour out their hearts on this platform and uh and so we have an entire team that is working 24 hours uh beginning this evening at 5 p.m saskatchewan time they're going to be coming in here to help us to set up this auditorium over the next 24 hours wow and you got a balcony up there we have yeah. a balcony up there and uh and so we'll be able to to squeeze in probably i don't know you you know the numbers better than i do i think we're yeah. totally floor on the floor and balcony what are you thinking i'm gonna say it's a good 450 close to five you know depends depends where we put them we do have overflow downstairs though in the most incredible theater speaking of which downstairs thursday one o'clock 1 30 we're gonna probably go live 1 30 in the afternoon in the theater downstairs 550 seats. We're doing a live reset. Laura Lynn, Tyler Thompson, Barry Wunsch, and all these different ones. All, uh, you know, different voices. Yourself. Oh, you're 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 gonna go show us the theater. Yeah, it's right below the sanctuary. This is this is inside this incredible school because you guys have a Christian school there. But let's look inside the theater. This is where everyone's going to, and the entrance is right outside. The front door but yeah take a look at this theater everyone isn't that amazing i'm just gonna walk down the aisle here just for a moment and uh this is a second largest theater or it's the second largest theater in the city of prince albert incredible look at this and um we're gonna do a live reset in there and we're going to be hijacking the firewall. Um, that is next Thursday at 1 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, that's noon here in British Columbia or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. We're going to do a live reset. And, of course, you know about the reset, everyone. And, Kevin, Wednesday mornings, we just jump on for 90 minutes with different apostles, prophets, intercessors, uh, you know, people in the political realm, business realm, intercessors, saints. And we get on and we just invite the spirit of God and he leads us. And we we kind of get a little bit of a encouragement direction for the intercessors um, on, on the reset, which begins a new week. This week began week 121. But we're going to do a live in-person reset Thursday at 1. And then Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Laura Lynn, Mark Fries, and myself, we're going to be doing more of a freedom track. Uh, they're upstairs kicking off this whole event. And then session one of the Faith Fire Freedom Rally uh, revival meeting, as I'm going to call it, is Friday morning, 10 o'clock. Uh, you must register at battleforcanada.com. Um, and, and but uh, just to, to make sure that we don't overbook over, you know, Make we don't try to fit a thousand people, we're only 600 people sit. Yeah, we, we've had to, you know, uh, we're charging $22 in this double portion here for a ticket, not much. But someone made a donation for like a hundred tickets. A hundred tickets are a hundred tickets. Okay, so if you if someone does not have money, yeah, this is what you need to do. You need to, um, we're going to have 100 tickets for you uh, at the door. Just show up and just say, hey, I'm one of the 100. Or you can phone our office at 236-420-1980. That's 
236-420-1980 and say, hey, I'm one of the 100 and I want to come for free. Or you can uh, email us at info at the harvest.ca. That's info at the harvest.ca. Um, there's the outside of the building. There's a large semicircle you drive up. Look at the size, the monster of this former boarding school. Wow. And so our bus will be pulling up there, dropping people off. off. That's incredible. Hunt, that's that, that building covers five square blocks. It's got a Olympics, basically just shy of an Olympic-sized pool. Um, it's got two cafeterias. It's, it's, a, it's, it's how many dorms are in the, in the school? Too many. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's 97 altogether, 97 dorms altogether. Uh, I, the school's going to be let out in a few minutes and I have somebody I'm going to sneak up on right now. Oh, here we are. We're in the secretary's office at the front of the school in nice. the front of the building. And I have somebody with me right now. Say hello. Hi. This is hello. Justina. And uh, our Justina is a graduate from Elevation Academy. And how old are you, Justina? 20. 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she came to us when she was three years old. And, but she's here right now. She preached the storm, the uh, prayed a storm the other day, but uh, she's a Métis background, Métis background. Generationally, they were Catholic and, uh, yeah, uh, kind most of short. Metis, of most Métis were. But she has a testimony. She was in the Catholic church, but Justina, could you just share a little bit? Sure. Um, I barely went to the Catholic Church, but I remember when I first went, I was 10 years old or 11. And, you know, I did not like it. It was boring <laughs> compared to what I know. Yeah. What else is it? Um, how long have you been with us now, Justina? Uh, years, 17. 17 years 17 now? 17 years. Yeah. yeah. So she is, um, she's, she's in, she was in the pr corporate prayer meeting the other night, just praying for family. And uh, what I love about uh, this move of God art is that we're going to be celebrating this weekend, the faithfulness of God, where there's a transformation testimony of people who come out of that place of, of what I would call generational, uh, you know, it was an identity, uh, identity birth thing that was that you know Genesis one twenty seven says that that God created us in His image, and I really believe what happened to the First Nations people was that God's in, original intention was that they would be birthed into the image of who He is, and I really believe with all of my heart God is bringing that back to this generation to these people, and that's what this whole conference is about: is that He's restoring the image of who he is within his people. And even though there's been generations of, of that, we call, talked about the altar, where the, the altar has altered people's image of who God is. And, and I believe this is why there's so much trouble, even with all of the, the, uh, the sexual diversity and all those things, because people's identity, the identity clash really is coming because they were never birthed as Christians into the into knowing who they were in the Lord. So, yeah. Thanks. Well, that's, just, that, that's fantastic. And we'll see you soon. It's Christina. Is that her name? Just Justina. Yeah, yeah that's Justina. her name. Yeah. Justina. We'll see you soon, Justina. Again. Yeah. Fantastic. She's and on the worship team. She's on the worship team. She is. She is, does PowerPoint. She's here three times a week during the evening, and she's here. Uh, uh, I'm in the reception room here. Um, she is here, I don't know, uh, seven days a week and just loving God. I'm just going to flip the lights on here because we're going to be here in the discernment room. And by uh, the way, you know, Justina made a comment that I just want, I want to comment on and bring clarification or just say something to our audience. You know, she said that the Catholic Church is boring. But let me just clarify something. Religion of men is boring. God right. is not boring. The Holy Spirit is far from boring. Um, 
It can be any church that simply follows traditions and rules and regulations of men and their own little program. When children say church is boring, it's unfortunate because God's not boring. Sometimes what we do and what we settle for is boring. But we're just believing for the fire of God to come back to Canada and ignite us. And we don't care what denominational name is above the door. Right. We want the fire of God to hit you all. And we don't care what denominational name is above your door. You need to come hang out with us and contend for revival there at Prince Albert next Thursday, all day Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Don't let money be an issue. There's 100 free tickets as... As Kevin said, you know, and and uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a, uh, by the way, you must register. That's if right. you don't register, you can buy a ticket at, at the door or get a free ticket, one of the 100. But it's the first ones, like basically 450, 500 that register that sit upstairs. There's an overflow downstairs. Oh, and good news, Kevin. Uh-huh. The good news is that the Holiday Inn... Holiday Inn um, has had, as this morning, 25 rooms wow. that we didn't even know about that was set aside for faith, fire, freedom. But people right. were booking the rooms and, and they found out there's no more rooms left. Well, there's no more rooms unless you say fi- faith, fire, freedom. Faith, fire, freedom, you get a better discount and there's rooms there. It's the nicest hotel in the city. Wow. <laughs> Tremendous. Anyway, yeah. That is so good. Uh, the rooms yeah. went so quickly in the residences. Literally, they were eaten up. You know, if we had another 30 or 40 beds, you know, I could talk about, you know, what it could have, should have. But the bottom line, these guys have been working around the clock, 16, 18 hour days trying to get the building ready. I've got a, another friend here who has just uh, moved here from um, Melford. He's a, he was with uh, Pastor Paul. And uh, Joseph, just wanted to bring a quick greeting. And what are your thoughts towards the conference? Yeah. Hi, Art. Hi, Canada. Hey, Joseph. I- I'm just so pumped. Uh, the Lord called my wife and I here to move to Prince Albert. I've been here for a month now. My wife is actually moving during conference week, so it's a busy, busy time. But, uh, you know, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And I believe as we come together this, uh, you know, next weekend, God's going to really pour out His Spirit and move across this nation. And there's a hunger and a thirst uh, for for a move of God. And I just, I just feel it right now. So praise God. <laughs> and I know that Joseph, you've been helping Kevin and Teresa there and you yes. and David and different ones. You guys have been busy, but you asked for it. You wanted everyone to come. Absolutely. So we welcome you. We can't wait to see you. Like our life has changed. It literally has been altered since we, there's that word again, altered. You know, and 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 I'm going to tell you what's coming. Tongues of fire. Yeah. Like, hey, listen, in the Acts, in the book of Acts, what happened on the birth of the church? Cloven tongues of fire came down, right? Right. Now, they didn't have the New Testament. They didn't have all this grid. Show me in the Torah where cloven tongues of fire came down and rested on anyone. Right. It's not there. That's not there. Praise the Lord for the people who don't reject God because they don't see it in the Bible. Let me she, tell you, they yes. would have a lot of people today, the religious church in Saskatchewan, the religious church in Canada, would reject the cloven tongues of fire. And they did in North Battleford. They did in Toronto. You know what? I don't see that in the Bible, brother. Listen, now we do actually see it, but they'll right. still reject it. That's right. That's Praise so- the Lord. 2,000 years ago, they didn't reject what they didn't see. Right. So true. It's so true. And I was in a I was in a, <clears throat> a religious church when I was younger. And my, my uh, family, my parents, unfortunately, turned back towards Buddhism because they were looking for the power and the demonstration and the a relationship with the living God. And so when I got born again, my family members started to come into the faith. So yes, can I go back to you? We're talking about tongues and speaking in tongues. We have been praying, asking God specifically 
that he would he would immerse the entire group in the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire this coming weekend, so not this weekend, the weekend of the conference. So if he wants to do that this weekend, that's great. But that is our prayer. That's what we're holding on to. If, if God did it before and he tore down the prior altars and he brought in a new altar, that altar space was filled in the hearts of the people and they became one with God. And so, Art, we are just getting ready for the baptism and immersion as your worship team comes and 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 all these visitors, Steve Holmstrom and 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 Casey and and friends of ours that are coming out of Ontario and and out east and and uh, Manitoba, across Canada, they're coming. Friends we've been with for thirty years, and they are praying and believing for the same thing: an immersion, the entire group being touched by the power of God during worship and prayer in the word. It's going to be epic. You know, when we are on the reset, I said, you know, the only answer is, is revival. That's the answer. For That's the answer. We're, we're going so far, so down, so deep, a divided powerless church that couldn't even st stand for what was right. Even during COVID. That's right. um, and and uh, and and uh, a church that is a, a adopting unbiblical, you know, definitions of marriage and so on and so forth. Um, a, 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 a really a communistic government that is taking freedoms. That is, it, it's it's the only answer. The only answer is revival. The only answer is Jesus. We have nothing else. And I, I've been saying that lately. I said that in the reset. Yesterday, my 10 years ago, you know, the, your memories on your Facebook pop up. Right, right. My memory from 10 years ago, October 20th of 2012, was <clears throat> I'm contending for revival. Nothing else will do. I'm a broken yep. record. I'm a I'm a <laughs> really a broken record. You know, <laughs> just like I, I haven't changed my tune in 10 years. We're still going for it, it's, but it's here. We've been touching it. You guys have been touching it. But here's the deal. We're not happy just to keep it here in Kelowna. We are coming to spread, spread it. And as a hungry bunch of people from coast to coast, French, English, first peoples, uh, immigrants, uh, the French, the English, all come together, one at the, all just one together, all equal at the cross. We're going to be calling out, for revival to hit the whole nation, not just hot spots here and there. So we just, we just, we're just inviting everyone to come to your city, Kevin. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, wow, uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, not that I have been dishonest with you, but I'd be honest with you. We can literally feel the effect of prayer in intercession right now. I am not stretching it. You can feel the shift beginning to take place within our people and, and the intercessors, some of the people stuck behind uh, from, from strike force and they're here for two weeks. Uh, one, one sister from uh, uh, Catherine uh, out of uh, Nanaimo, BC. She's here. I met with her a couple of times already. Hey, Mary, Mary, say hello. It's our, come running in. I saw was on. Uh, <laughs> there she is. Come on in quick, Mary. Say hello. You're live on, on the prophetic eye. <laughs> she stands way in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Conference. Yeah, just quickly. No, just we'll see you. We'll see you again soon. Hi, Art. Hi. How are you? Good. We'll see you soon. We're looking forward to it, Art. Well, hard. <laughs> it's going to be so good. We're bringing our band. A is that David? This yep. is David. Bless you, man. Right on, David. How's, how's the administration going? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Got people calling from all over. They just, we, I think we just, we just, uh, we did something there. We lost you there for a moment. No, no problem. Yeah, people are calling in just so excited. They can't wait to be here, so. Yes. 
So good, my brother. Um, so very, very good. Um, well, I'm not going to, I know you guys got lots of work to do there. I'm not going to keep you too much longer, Kevin. Um, yeah. But uh, any, any last comments here you have for uh, the Canadian Firewall? With This will be aired at 5 o'clock on Saturday on the Firewall. We are live right now. Right. Um, yeah, so there's Sky. She's a First Nations sister of mine. Sky, what's, what's, what's Sky May? What's going on is we're doing a, uh, a national gathering in Prince Albert next Thursday night through Sunday morning. It's also the grand opening of the Canadian Revival Centre. In right. um, at uh, I believe it's fourteen oh five Bishop Pascal Place. That's there right. In, there in Prince Albert, and it was a former Catholic boarding school that is that is now going to be used for a revival center. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so any any last words there, Kevin? Uh for just Thanksgiving. No matter where I go um, in Canada now, um, I feel like I'm just at home because of firewall, because of you, because of the the body of Christ. Uh, I I don't I can't explain it other than I just feel like this is a, a movement that is growing where people people no matter where we travel we're attached we're attached to the whole and so. The, the praying that's going out, the releasing of, of prayer in the prophetic words, the decrees and the declarations that are going out, you can feel the effect of that here in the city right now. Catherine came to me last night. I'll say this one final thing. And she said, Kevin, the atmosphere has shifted since last weekend. And so, yeah, sure, there was a loss of life. There was actually three, not two. There was three loss of lives. But Art, I don't want to focus on that. My focus is right. on Jesus as you said, and thank you so much, Firewall, for praying. You know, Kevin and team, a lot of what you're feeling is this. There is an increase of angelic activity that is tangible. There is a lot of darkness and attack against revival in the nation of Canada. But the prayer that has gone up in this nation for the last few years Yes. And with the Tongues and Tribes prayer strike that happened a week ago, and yes. all the prayer and fasting that's going on right now, you know, um, angels are being deployed, legions of angels to bring healing, salvation, encouragement, yes. mantles. They're coming down. There's going to be coals of fire, like Jeez. touched Isaiah, that also, you know, Revelation 8, it talks about the prayers of the saints, which you guys have been praying. The prayers yep. of the saints go up day and That's night like incense. You know what the angelic does in heaven? Takes the prayers of the saints, the takes fire from the altar, it says, mixes it with the prayers of the saints, puts it in a censer and hurls it back to earth, and there's earthquakes and lightning spiritually what are you what are you feeling you're feeling the spiritual reality of prayers of the saints being mixed with fire from the altar hurled to prince albert there's going to be an explosion of revival coals yes. that each one gets to take back to every corner of the province yeah and this is the first of many national regional gatherings of the nation coming together god coming down a harvest of souls, a shaking off, and a waking up from the religious spirit. Yeah. And the cloven tongues of fire coming down on the faithful to shift the cities and the regions in which they live. And this is what you're feeling, Kevin. How does it's that a, sound? It's the it's the tipping point. Yes, it's a tipping point. As it says in Revelation 5, the harp and bowl, the worship and prayer, the prayer, the incense going up into that bowl. And, and overflowing and overflowing. And so that's what we're in expectation of, that that bowl is full and it's about to tip over. It's at the tipping point. Even though we're at the tipping point in the city where, where many are, are, are fearful, many have, many have retreated 
Uh, many are walking in a sense of hopelessness or fear or confusion, but we are standing strong. We believe this is the tipping point for the church. We just got to make it here that weekend. So beautiful. By the way, uh, speaking about beautiful, did you see the weather forecast for Prince Albert next week? <laughs> you know what? I That's crazy because I just said it to someone this morning. I, I spoke uh, earlier on and I said this. The weather is warm, but I spoke it back in April and in, in May. This is a late harvest. It's a late harvest. It's very warm out here today. You could go outside with your, just a shirt on today. And in, in, in sometimes there's snow here. Usually there is in November. But this is a late harvest. And I'm believing that the harvest that is about to come in is supernatural. And there's going to be a harvest of souls coming in this fall. Yeah, it's going to be like 9, 8, 10 degrees. I got here Friday, Prince Albert, 10 degrees, sunny skies, a few yeah. clouds around. Yeah. Man, am I ever excited that it wasn't like North Battleford from four years ago where it was minus 17 around the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I, I'm excited. You know, this is going to be beautiful. It, it looks like it might be a little bit of adverse weather on, on the Tuesday. We get yep. in there Wednesday, bringing some sunshine from the Okanagan with us. Come it's on. So, it's going to be so exciting to be with you. <laughs> and so if you haven't been fasting, I encourage you to fast at least yep. until Friday morning. Fast for the next week. Contend, like, rem like we were talking about, for cloven tongues of fire. Yes. They prayed for something that the Bible did not even say would be happening. It was nowhere recorded that the outpouring like that would happen. But Jesus said, wait here till you receive power. Ten days yep. later, boom, it happened. We believe it's coming down in Prince yep. Albert. Coming down. Coming down. So for more information, go to our website, battleforcanada.com or .ca. Uh, RRA.ca. We're building the website there. You'll probably find some more information there. Get a hold of our office, info at, at, info at theharvest.ca. You must register. There's That's still right. hotels. There's actually, um, it's only less than 90 minutes from Saskatoon Airport. That's it's correct. Close. Is there anything else I need to uh, bring forward to the people? Nicole or Mo? Volunteers. Volunteers at the harvest. Volunteers at theharvest.ca. If you can volunteer, we need people. Boots on the ground. Uh, volunteer. Is it volunteers? Yes. Volunteers at theharvest.ca. Email volunteers at theharvest.ca. We're still needing some volunteers there. There's going to be product tables. There's going to, there's, 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 there's going to be some meals that are for sale. There's go to our website. We'll see you guys soon. Kevin, yeah. love you guys. We'll see you soon. All right. um, and, and we're looking forward to seeing that big um, religious altar gone and our dance team. Lighting yeah. it up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lord on it. Awesome. Bless okay. You. Well, we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye. Well, you know, <clears throat> as we were talking about, here's a, as we talk about prophetic perspectives, some of you may not have ever realized that, but there was no such thing as cloven tongues of fire in the whole Old Testament. And that's all the church had to go by. And the Jews, the ones who knew the Torah very well. Nonetheless, the fire came down. God is allowed to do stuff that's not necessarily written in his word. A lot of people say, well, we're just looking for the fruit of what <laughs> the early church, you know, had. Um, and here... We want the fruit that the early church had, but we're rejecting the spirit that they did have. It's impossible to be the church without the spirit of God. And this is what Canada has done. They have, as it says in Galatians 3, 1, who has bewitched you, you foolish Canadians. It says Galatians there, but I'm changing the word Galatians to Canadians. Who has, who's bewitched you? What kind of witchcraft has come against you? Or that you're trying to use. That what, what was began in the spirit, you're trying to continue in the flesh. I grew up in the Catholic Church and I grew up in, and also in Pentecostalism. I watched men and women 
organizations reject the Holy Spirit and try to do their churchianity without the Holy Ghost. It led to powerlessness, their children walking away, a divided church, um, a church with no favor in the nation. It's time to reject our religiousness. It's time to embrace the Holy Ghost. You want the fruit of the early church? You got to receive the Spirit of God that the early church had. Well, with that, I hope you guys still love me. But we'll see you soon. We're going to make a free live stream available. We're going to put that in an email coming up. Free live stream. We want Canada to take part of this. Free live stream. Pray for our tech team that we can get it all all right. Um, get, get it all right. It's time for revival. We need revival. Without it, the nation is lost. So we love you guys. Thank you for supporting our ministry in the Canadian Firewall. You can go to www.canadianfirewall.ca if you want to partner with us. If you if you if you if you appreciate our programs, the time we take to rent a building, pay tech guys and cameras and all of everything. Consider becoming a partner with the Canadian Firewall today. Prayer is the answer that brings revival fire, that brings reformation. So with that, remember, surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7. This has been another edition of Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives. We'll see you next time. And we'll see you on the reset or in Prince Albert or in many of the other various locations we're going to be coming to the nation of Canada. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.